commission is charged with the responsibility of among us. The North East Development Commission NEDC Act was signed on October 25, 2017, and the governing board of the commission was inaugurated by President Muhammad Buhari on 8 May 2019. Without doubt, the past one year had been full of challenges for the NEDC, but it has been remarkably eventful for the commission, both in the delivery of humanitarian assistance to victims of the Northeast crisis and in spearheading efforts at the redevelopment of the devastated region. At the inauguration of the NEDC board, the president also made it clear that his administration established the Northeast Development Commission in fulfillment of his pledge to rebuild the Northeast region, which has suffered from the effects of the Boko Haram insurgency since 2009. Let me emphasize that this 13 member governing board has been carefully constituted based on the proven track record of hard work and integrity of members. It is therefore the expectation of this government and people of the zone that you will rapidly and systematically set to work to address all areas of your mandates in a fair and equitable manner. The Act establishing the Commission charges it with the responsibility of receiving and managing funds from the Federation account, donors and other sources for the purpose of the settlement, rehabilitation and reconstruction of roads, houses, business premises of victims and various infrastructure compromised as a result of the conflict. The devastation of the North is especially for North State cannot really be uh, quantified. It's quite very huge. It amounts to uh, uh, billions of naira. And, uh, uh, but the government is determined, Mr. President is determined to see that uh, uh, the recovery of the Northeast is uh, our main focus. And this is evident by the fact that Mr. President created the Northeast Development Commission, which is charged with this responsibility of uh, early recovery uh, of the Northeast. The ongoing conflict has adversely affected the six states in the Northeast, especially Adamawa, Brono, and Yobe, otherwise known as the Bay States. As part of the Northeast Geopolitical Zone, Gombe, Bauchi and Taraba states have continuously served as immediate host communities to the thousands of internally displaced persons, IDPs. By June 2018, an estimated 37,530 people have lost their lives in the deadly conflict, according to the Nigeria Security Tracker, NST, and the Armed Conflict Location and Event Data Project, ACLED of the University of Sussex. The casualty figure comprises of Boko Haram fighters, civilians and security forces. Over 2 million IDPs are still being catered for by government and its partners in designated camps. Yet, many others have assimilated with host communities according to the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. UNOCHA. Available statistics have also indicated that about 170,000 victims of the insurgency from Nigeria's border towns and villages still live as refugees in neighboring Cameroon, Chad, and Niger. Three years ago in June 2017, the value of destruction of private property and public infrastructure stood at $9 billion, with Borno State as epicenter of the conflict bearing most of the brand. The destruction route in the state included 956,453 units of private houses, 5,335 classrooms in 512 primary schools, 38 high schools and two tertiary institutions, 
201 hospitals, dispensaries, and primary health care facilities were similarly torched. In the north, northeast is devastated beyond description. Very, very, very badly so. Apart from property, lives, oh my God. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible situation we are. You know, in mosques, churches, lives, private houses, everything is in shambles. On several occasions, I shed tears. I am even becoming emotional now. The insurgency has affected the people badly. What we read in the newspapers is nothing compared to what you see on ground. When you see the living condition of these people, these are people like you and I who had their homes, their families, living happily, doing their businesses. And here they are. They have been turned into destitutes. Apart from massive dislocation of people, the Boko Haram insurgency has caused extensive damage to public utilities and amenities in the region. Roads, bridges and communications infrastructure had been severely impacted, inhibiting safe movement and interaction among people. Both intra- and inter-regional trade, for which the region was known for, had been undermined over these years. From the great days of the Trans-Saharan trade, the Northeast region had served as a strategic gateway to the trade corridor between Nigeria and the Central African states of Cameroon and Central Africa Republic, as well as Niger Republic and North Africa. Substantial number of schools have either been destroyed or closed, following repeated attacks by insurgents. In 2014 and 2018, there was global outrage when more than 250 female students of the Government Girls Secondary School Chibok and over 100 girls from Dapchi Secondary School, respectively, were forcefully adopted by terrorists. In response to the horror, the international community united in sympathy and solidarity with Nigeria and has continued to partner with governmental agencies, including the NEDC, to ameliorate the deplorable condition of IDPs and address the underlying causes of the region's neglect and underdevelopment. Apart from the loss of innocent civilian lives, perhaps the educational sector was the most severely affected by the crisis. Over 500 teachers had been consumed in the midst of the crisis, prompting many to flee the region, while parents pulled out their words from schools in consideration of their safety. Suicide bombers, mostly young females, were often recruited, brainwashed and dispatched to attack soft targets as the Northeast came under siege at the peak of the crisis. However, a lot of these ugly incidents have been reduced significantly following military successes against the insurgents. Peace is very critical. I keep saying that in the situation we are, peace, stability is the prime factor that can make us work. But when you check the fiction now, and transpose it against what, what it was some few years ago. The serious, there's some level of improvement that can make us do certain things, right? For instance, we have six states in the region now. One can conveniently say some states are more stable and peaceful than others. So in those areas, you can start working based on the basics on ground for you to do developmental work. Once you have the opportunity, it's always good to use that opportunity to enhance positive peace, enhance positive peace, so you can build layers and layers. The displacement crisis sadly turned the Northeast into a regrettable theater 
of humanitarian crisis on the world map, stabilizing the region and returning it to normalcy therefore became one of the priorities of the President Muhammadu Buhari's administration. It therefore consolidated previous initiatives under the NEDC Act to provide for the effective coordination of humanitarian assistance and the development of the region. The North East Development Commission Establishment Bill, which originated from the National Assembly, provides for a governing board comprising a chairman, one member from each of the six geopolitical zones, a representative from the Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning. The Act also provided for a management team comprising of the Managing Director, Chief Executive and three Executive Directors. Remarkably, the NEDC was to hit the ground running, the teething challenges of newly established agencies notwithstanding. Our plan is to have a structure that is uh, competent and efficient structure and to staff these structures with competent and experienced staff to assist the management discharging its mandate. The first step taken by members of the board and management of the commission was both in form of assessment and familiarization tour of the Northeast region. They saw the damage wrought as a result of the insurgency interacted with victims, state governors, and other key stakeholders in the region. In addition to inspecting roads and bridges, the team visited schools, markets, hospitals, public buildings, among other structures vandalized in the course of more than a decade of worst acts of terror in the region. Uh, you will agree with me that if you are to provide rehabilitation, you have to provide uh, what I may call resettlement, reconcile people, do reconstruction, provide development, you can, can only begin to embark on such a humongous project if you understand the environment, you know the people, you know the place, you have assessed the needs, and uh, you have also devised a strategy for meeting them up. Otherwise, you'll just be groping in the dark. Having done that, we set up committees to go out and liaise with the governments of the states to see on the ground what their priorities are and how we can key into it. Following their tour, a comprehensive needs assessment document for materials and services as well as delivery schedule was developed to bring about quick recovery to displaced victims. Recent data obtained and analyzed from humanitarian partners such as State's Emergency Management Agencies, SEMAS, United Nations Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, UNOCHA, International Organization for Migration, IOM, and the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, were of great help in the process. The summary of the report had revealed a huge humanitarian response gap as millions of displaced persons lived in appalling conditions owing to their loss of productive assets, homes, and farmlands. For example, there was not a single motorable road to facilitate human mobility and commercial activities throughout Bruno State. Food insecurity was identified in most IDP camps, particularly in Bruno, parts of Yobe and Adamawa states. By the, by the acts, our major mandate is development. But when we started, there's still emergency and the humanitarian crisis is going on. So the governing board decided, look, let's look at, we can't develop when there's humanitarian crisis and vice versa. But we all know this thing can go simultaneously the humanitarian aspect and the development and also leading to peace. So our early activities were mainly narrowed to the humanitarian activities while we intervene. 
most of the emergency learning centers erected for children of IDPs had challenges of inadequate classrooms, teachers, and teaching aids. People are surprised even to say that there is an initiative like that, self-school initiative. But it's a simple idea. Our people in the Northeast were displaced. Uh, our children were not going to school. So somebody said, ah, why can't we just spread them all over some safe schools in the, in the maybe most, mostly in the north, north, northern part of the country, for instance. And then they were like, in Benway State, you go to them, some of the schools there, federal government institutions, unity schools in particular. We make sure that they go to unity schools because these are schools that are controlled by the federal government, not the state government. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So we, we now, you know, give them admission in most of the schools around. And then they continue with their education. Some of them have graduated. Some of them are still on. As I told you, it was an initiative that was started. It was being funded, actually, then, maybe then, in collaboration with the, with, with the federal government. But later, uh, the people, like the ones we are attending to now, because it's like in phases now, 2019, 2020, 2021 or something. The first outreach program sponsored by the Northeast Development Commission was in partnership with Pro Health International. The overall goal of the outreach was to increase the answers of 3,000 community members affected by the insurgency in Medugri and its environs to qualitative health care. The commission recruited a team of qualified medical personnel supported by non-medical staff to offer services to the communities. There were general outpatient consultations where 25 doctors diagnosed diseases like diabetes, malaria, hypertension, upper respiratory tract infections, and also made referrals for patients with chronic conditions beyond the scope of the intervention. Several surgical procedures were carried out with the assistance of hospital staff at the host facility. Other interventions during the medical outreach included dental and eye procedures. We discovered that our people were really suffering. Nowhere to go to in terms of medical, you know, attention. Like the, the one we had in my degree in Borno State earlier. If I tell you the number of people who are expected there, you'll be very surprised. By the grace of the Almighty God, soon, when we fully take off in the Northeast, when medical, uh, uh, so, uh, medical institutions or other health institutions and facilities are fully established, you'll find out that medical outreaches, outreaches are no longer needed. Because the facility will be there for the people. Security challenges. The governors of the six northeast states of Borono, Yobe, Adamawa, Gombe, Taraba, and Bochi are crucial partners in the resettlement, rehabilitation, reconstruction, and general development of the northeast region. They are also important stakeholders in facilitating the distribution of humanitarian assistance to the internally displaced persons. Board members and the management team of the Northeast Development Commission paid courtesy visits to each of the governors of the six states during the working tour of the region. We remain eternally grateful. The Commission was able to provide large quantum of put and non-put items to the displaced communities <clears throat> in all the states of the sub-region. Apart from some of the social infrastructure that they have started and are also willing to start because of the time constraint that they have. So in a nutshell, I think we are good to go. We are wishing them all the best. I'm sure they have studied the region and they are coming up with work plans in line with our needs. So we are working together to ensure that we address most of these problems. Synergy, cooperation and whatever that we are required to do in order to enable them to do their job. That the support that we will give them, uh, we'll make sure that wherever there is a need for us to do the legwork for them to sustain their, their work, uh, to be able to tell corporate Nigerians that they must survive. The team knows that for effective and efficient achievement of its mandate, there must be a synergy 
between the governors and the commission. The governors are not only closer to the people, but they have a valuable knowledge of the terrain and undoubtedly have a better understanding of the needs of the various communities. The Northeast Development Commission has been very uh, forthcoming uh, in assisting us in Tarawa State greatly, particularly in areas of the IDPs. Particularly, I want to thank them for the COVID-19, which they partook very much in giving us all, uh, ambulances and in giving us, sending us some uh, medication, sending us some uh, items which uh, now we're using in our hospitals and uh, our center. They have been very supportive and uh, that is a very good move in the right direction. With the caliber of the man managing the, the commission, the MD himself, uh, supported by, by very prudent and uh, people of integrity in the board, uh, will start receiving projects that people will see that really uh, the, the law and the commission is, is, is coming to their aid because of the destructions of the, of the criminals called uh, Boko Haram. And because of the situation we found ourselves, all the states have keyed in and aligned with the aspirations of NEDC. We are working together, and I believe very soon, with what NEDC has achieved in one year, the results will emanate and the rest of the world will realize what NEDC has done and what the governments of the Northeast sub-region are doing by way of developing human capital and human development. We thank God for NEDC and we thank God for the efforts they are making. The Northeast Development Commission has various committees headed by members of the governing board. This ensures inclusion and the devolution of responsibility in achieving the strategic goals and objectives for which it was set up. The Committee on Master Plan is one of such strategic committees. What are the weaknesses for how much has Boko Haram and the insurgency destroyed the Northeast? To how much have they decapacitated the people of the Northeast? Given this scenario, what therefore does the Northeast need in order to become part of a peaceful Nigeria? The Committee on Master Plan and indeed the entire management of the Northeast Development Commission understands the essence of an articulated roadmap. The document is almost ready and will be presented for ratification and implementation. The need assessment report we're supposed to provide the basis for the comprehensive master plan report is almost being concluded. And the consultant has been mandated to review, for instance, the 2020 budgets as it affects the six states of the Northeast. There is the Buhari plan that has been reviewed so many times before we came into, uh, we were inaugurated. It's also mandated to review the Buhari plan to see how much of the Buhari plan has been implemented and what are the gaps that have not been implemented. The Mambila Hydro Power Project is one of the important projects supported by the Northeast Development Commission. The dimension is huge, the investment by the federal government is large, and the intention and papers are noble. The benefits derivable from the Mambila Hydro Power Project is capable of adding value to governance in the entire Northeast region, and indeed Nigeria at large. Already, arrangements have been concluded to launch six major interventions to support local content production for the Mambila Hydro Power Project in the six Northeast states. The Commission has a special committee in charge of the Mambila Hydro Power Project and it is working tirelessly to make the huge project a success. One of the biggest uh, projects of Northeast Development Commission is the Mambila Hydro. And Mambila Hydro, you know, especially the local content aspect, is, is also within the purview of Northeast Development Commission. And we are talking 
We are talking with Ministry of Power. We are talking with uh, Ministry of uh, Special Duties. Uh, we are talking with the Senate. We are talking with the House of Representatives. You know, we are talking with the governors in each of the states, you know, to, to come and put our heads together, to mentor, to develop, to actualization of this project that President Muhammad Buhari, by the will of God, has actually given us, you know, the power to do. Human resource is driving force behind every corporate organization. The North East Development Commission says it sets out with a competent and reliable staff force who are steering its affairs. Humanitarian work requires professionalism with capacity to deliver unique service in the North East. One year after its establishment, the Commission says although it lacks the required workforce, its compact but motivated staff have been delivering quality service to the region. So far so good. We are managing the place very well. But because we are not fully given the go-ahead to recruit the required staff, we are managing. And uh, you can see one staff discharging two, three responsibilities because of the or you can find a, 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 a section being headed by one and no staff under him. But we are still managing. We are in the process of employing our own staff. We are looking at staff with the right skills. And even with the secondary staff, we're looking for staff that will come and understudy them. Because the secondary staff will not stay with us forever. We need to be independent and also have our own staff that can carry on with the work. So that is right now what we are doing. Despite the shortage of staff, we have achieved a lot. The Humanitarian Affairs Department handles the bulk of the work of the Commission. A special committee on humanitarian affairs oversees the early recovery and resettlement of IDPs and returnees. Because they were coming in their thousands, it became a heavy burden, even to the uh, NGOs that were on ground, the international donors. That was why I referred to fatigue in most of these um, organizations. That we started by ensuring we provided food and non-food items, basically to stabilize this person settling down in most of the IDPs. The commission has done quite a lot there in terms of the supplies of food to the IDPs, in terms of helping the various respective ministries of health with medical equipment and supplies. The mandate of the NEDC clearly spells out its role regarding finances for the development of the Northeast. Its governing board has a standing committee that oversees matters regarding finance and general purpose. Funds from the Federation account, international donor agencies, corporate organizations, individuals are intended for the reconstruction and development of the Northeast are to be received and managed by the Northeast Development Commission. I do not think there has been any other major intervention that is much more than the oil companies, oil and gas companies in this country. Um, they have intervened variously uh, by way of uh, donating some of money, by way of sponsoring projects uh, with the hospitals and um, roads and several other projects that they have sponsored. They have been able to uh, commit an estimated 40-something billion. Of course, some of these monies have not been received. Um, for some of the sums that are yet to be received, efforts have been made to ensure that these monies are received. The tempo that the Commission started with will continue also past what we are having now, because as you know, uh, for a new baby, you always 
hopefully or expect uh, improvement. So we expect improvement in the activities of the commission and so also in the funding of the commission. So far we have, the board has made efforts in intervening and providing circle, but we still need to do more. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, UNOCHA, is responsible for monitoring humanitarian funding, advocacy, policy making, and information exchange in facilitating rapid response for emergency assistance. This makes OCHA a strategic partner of the NADC. We in the international community are more than ready to continue working with them to build better in Northeast Nigeria. The needs are enormous, but the journey has started. And I think the Buhari, the Buhari uh, uh, framework has laid out clearly the humanitarian recovery and development needs in Northeast Nigeria. What we call on NEDC is to bridge that nexus between humanitarian development and peace in Northeast Nigeria and so that people can start rebuilding their lives and also they can start having hope to bring this crisis to an end. Over 7.6 million people in need of urgent humanitarian assistance in the affected states of Borono, Yobe and Adamawa. Bauchi, Gombe and Taraba states have fled their homes in search of peace and shelter. Food and non-food items are periodically distributed to the IDPs in the states of the region. Of recent, areas like Auno, Gajugana and Garkida have experienced a surge of insurgent attacks by the insurgents and consequently received relief materials. 32 lives were lost in addition to 150 assets, including houses, business premises and vehicles during the February 2020 attack at Auno village. So we have done a lot in that area, in the provision of food and non-food items, uh, in area of health, and so on and so forth. Now we are moving to the second phase of development, but not totally neglecting the humanitarian, but we have to start somewhere. And we have our plans are ready now to go into the second phase of how can we move people from the camp and resettle them or move them from camp and take them to where they can stay based on international principle about not forcing them and so on and so forth. The agency is a baby. It's only, it's, it's only been in existence for a year. And within that year, it has achieved a tremendous amount of progress. Just recently, they supplied vehicles and ambulances to the, the military and also some security agencies, and also ambulances to hospitals and primary health care centers in, certain, in all the six states of the Northeast. One year has been uh, good because of uh, the tremendous results that are on ground. Um, as a new agency, you know, to start from a point A to point B takes quite a lot of effort. Uh, so far, we're on course. The states affected by the protracted crisis are predominantly agrarian. People are anxious to return to their farmlands to cultivate food as soon as relative peace returns to their communities. The NEDC has embarked on what it described as integrated agricultural projects, wearing fertilizers, seeds, herbicides, and the agricultural extension services are extended to farmers. We developed the integrated agricultural intervention, which is looking at the entire value chain in agriculture. 
look at the mechanization, which is one of the problems that is really impeding agricultural development. If we continue using the same tools, the same holes and cutlers, we'll go nowhere. So we look at the, the mechanization and then look at the most important aspect of agriculture that people take for granted. Good quality seed. No matter what you put on the land, as long as the seed is poor, you will get very little yield. So we look at supply, sourcing and supplying good quality seeds. And when you do, of course, there are pests, there are weeds. So we now said, okay, also include the provision of inputs, pesticides, insecticides, etc., along, of course, with the fertilizers. If you go to the Adamawa, the Borno, that's Bama, Biu, and Gashwa, you will see those things. If you go to Bauti now, you will see them walking. The youths are an important part of the demographic population, but most of them are out of school and not gainfully employed because of insecurity in the region. The North East Development Commission plans to engage them in information technology projects now ongoing in the member states of the Commission. When completed, they would provide skills and direct employment to thousands of youths wishing to exploit the opportunities provided by the global economy. We are establishing uh, ICT centers in the six states in the Northeast. There are already three that are operational. They are training our uh, youth you know, in uh, simple ways of even repairing things like your handset, etc. Then some of them will be trained in graphics design, who will be doing the invitation cards, the ID cards, whatever you want, letterheads, etc. Simple things like that. To tackle poverty, illiteracy and ecological problems, the Commission has approved the execution of two projects in education, agriculture and health in each of the 112 local government areas of the region as part of its short-term development plan for the first quarter of 2020. The COVID-19 pandemic took the world by storm with its unique challenges in the beginning of the year. Early enough, the NEDC had reasoned that if proactive measures were not taken in good time, the public health issue had the potential of making a bad situation grave. In fact, by March 2020, none of the Northeast states had possessed COVID-19 testing capacity, adequate isolation facilities, or sufficient life-saving equipment such as ventilators and respirators. The Commission first swung into action with sensitization campaigns, especially in all IDP camps. It donated ambulances, ventilators, hand sanitizers, infrared thermometers, and thousands of personal protective equipment, PPEs. These 20 bed isolation center at the Stadium IDP camp and another 30 bed center at Muna IDP camp, all in Medugri, were built and fully equipped by the Northeast Development Commission. The Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Hajia Sadia Umar Farouk, commissioned the projects to the delight of many IDPs. Federal Treasury health institutions in the Northeast region play significant roles in the provision of healthcare services. The Commission has donated ambulances, hospital beds, and solar refrigerators to eight federal tertiary institutions in the member states of the region. They are the University of Medjugorje Teaching Hospital, Abubakar Tafwa Belewa University Teaching Hospital, Bochi, the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Medjugorje, Federal Medical Center, Azare, Federal Medical Center, Gombe, Federal Medical Center, Jalingo, Federal Medical Center, Unguru, and the Federal Medical Center, Yola. They are all strategic partners in the training and retraining of health students and personnel. The donation is also in recognition of their efforts at fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. 
80% of rural housing in Brno state had been destroyed in the Boko Haram insurgent war, resulting in severe deficit of safe and secure housing in the state. Therefore, resettlement has become a key aspect of the assignment of the Northeast Development Commission, while Brno state as the epicenter of the crisis has suffered the most devastating effects of the conflict. The groundbreaking ceremony of 1,000 housing unit project in Mafa local government area of Brno State was recently declared open by the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Preparedness and Social Development, Hajia Sadia Umar Farouk, on behalf of President Muhammad Buhari. Work has reached an advanced stage in the construction of the first phase of the houses in which to resettle internally displaced persons. The ongoing project at Ngowom village is part of the 10,000 presidential housing program for Brno State. The remaining 9,000 will be spread across the nine other most affected local government areas in due course. Each of the semi-detached bungalows will accommodate four households and cost 2 million naira. Brno State government says it is determined to close down all internally displaced persons camps in Medugri by May 2021, after all IDPs must have been resettled. Sustainable peace is a prerequisite for development without which the Northeast Development Commission cannot deliver on its statutory mandates of early recovery, peace building, and social economic development of the region. Among its functions is the coordination of civil-military relationship and ensuring stability. The Northeast Development Commission is accelerating the pace for achieving peace in the region without which it cannot implement the major part of the mandate for which it was established. Although huge successes have been recorded by the military in the fight against the insurgents, experts have submitted that in order to achieve lasting peace, security and stability in the Northeast, the nation's security forces must not lack logistic support at the war front. The commission at this ceremony in Medugri donated 120 operational logistic vehicles to various security agencies. The commission is boosting the capacity of stakeholders in the security and health sectors of the Northeast to assist it to bring about a secure and stable environment to enable it to implement its mandate. One of the many effects of the Northeast violence is that of thousands of orphaned children. The Commission has demonstrated empathy towards these vulnerable population by investing in child protection, education and welfare. In this regard, it has undertaken the donation of relief materials to the orphanages. This is in addition to launching a region-wide educational endowment fund. It could be recalled that there are about 60,000 orphans and over 5,000 widows flowing from the conflict in Bruno State alone. 2,056 candidates from 1,028 wards to be trained in basic ICT skills. 2,056 beneficiaries from 1,028 wards to receive scholarship for bachelor's degrees. 336 candidates from 112 local government areas to receive scholarship for master's degree in demand-driven areas 
in Nigerian and overseas institutions. The endowment fund will give 18 scholarships to candidates from 18 senatorial districts of the Northeast. NEDC will offer training and retraining to 20,000 teachers, nurses, and midwives. This is in addition to special support to 5,000 beneficiaries like orphans and victims of insurgency to engage in sports. The famous Lake Chad had been the source of economic livelihood for the huge population of the Northeast, especially Bruno and other states who depend on it for irrigation, fresh water, fishing, and as a means of transportation. It is estimated that the Lake Chad had been a source of water to more than 30 million people in the four member countries of the Lake Chad Basin, namely Nigeria, Chad, Cameroon, and Niger. But all has not been well with the Lake Chad over the years. The Great Lake has shrunk in size and created a massive ecological challenge to Nigeria and the three other countries that share from its resources. The Boko Haram insurgency has even made the situation worse. In response to this challenge too, the federal government has assessed a World Bank loan of $370 million to support the recovery of the Lake Chad. Nigeria is in the Lake Chad Recovery and Development Project through the restructuring of the Multi-Sectoral Crisis Recovery Project, currently being implemented in the frontline states of Bruno, Adamawa and Yobe by the NEDC. As the North East Development Commission marks its first year anniversary, it is imperative that all partners in the North East Humanitarian Cluster continue to keep their eyes on the ball in the light of the determination of the federal and state governments to return IDPs and refugees back to their ancestral lands in safety and dignity as from next year. As the operator and custodian of the federal government Northeast Development Master Plan, otherwise the Buhari Plan, the NEDC has continued to unite and strengthen its network of partnership with all concerned parties towards the stabilization and redevelopment process of the Northeast region. The destruction meted to Nigeria's Northeastern territory and people took over a decade and is still going on although on a lower intensity than in the preceding years, when access to many parts of the conflict zone was extremely difficult. Testimonies of victims of the senseless war levied on innocent Nigerians by Boko Haram terrorists point to the increasing appreciation of NEDC's positive impact on their lives. <laughs> Within a relatively short period since the inauguration of its board and management. The NEDC itself is optimistic that at the fullness of time it will fulfill its obligatory mandate of constructing a solid economic foundation that will facilitate sustainable employment opportunities, ensure equitable service delivery and provision of critical infrastructure for the entire people of the Northeast region. Sure, the journey ahead will not be an easy task for the Commission, but its management and workforce say their activities will help the region to break the wall of vulnerability and help the Northeast to bounce back by building bridges of sustainable peace, stability and social cohesion. Expectations are very high. As we started, we have to, to actualize, actualize, operationalize the mandate of the Commission from ground zero. Meaning, we have to set off the corporate governance structure, the operational structure, the administrative structure, the technical structure. These things take a lot of time. And as we are doing this, we are doing in the context of a bigger picture, where a federal government agency playing an act in the states. So we have to balance and we have to obey a lot of uh, expectation in terms of doing those things right. This is 
uh, second challenge. And third one, which is very important, I take it very seriously, is the fact that people or the government or the stakeholders, especially the people who have been affected by this insurgency, want to see results now, 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 now. I don't blame them because they are so fat. So balancing all these things is not easy. But this is why we are here. I'm glad to tell you now that by the grace of God, if you ask me next year this same question, all I will tell you is, all right, go to my degree and see that road. Go to Jalingo and see. Go to Adamao and see. Go to Gombe and see. Go to Bauchi and see. Go to, and that is what's going to happen. We are going to bounce back. Just like the corona, uh, what do you call them? COVID-19 has introduced something to us. Well, there's that lockdown, there's that slowing down of activities and so on. But this also is going to show us that the time has come for us to get up. And we are going to bounce very, very strongly within the next 12 months. I can tell you this one. And not only that, not only that, the Northeast will recover and be at par with the rest of Nigeria.